Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, we will be going over the journal entries to form a new partnership. So here we have on February 23rd, Olga and Jesus decide to combine their proprietorships into a new partnership. So this is two businesses that are coming together to create a new partnership. Now, Olga contributes $20,000 cash, $30,000 in accounts receivable, and an allowance for doubtful accounts balance of $2,500. Jesus contributes $2,000 cash, merchandise inventory of $7,000, and equipment with an initial cost of $80,000 and accumulated depreciation of $50,000. Now, upon further analysis of their contributions, the partners decide that $1,000 of the accounts receivable are completely worthless and that $3,000 is a reasonable estimation of uncollectible accounts receivable. Now, they also agree that the merchandise inventory should be valued at $5,000 and that the equipment's market value is $32,000. And we're going to go ahead and journalize Olga's investment within the partnership and Jesus's investment within the partnership. Now, when you are dealing with partnership formation, the important thing to remember are those agreed upon values. They essentially are supposed to reflect fair market values. So um, let's go ahead and let's start with Olga. So on 223, we have Olga who is contributing, she's contributing some cash. So the first item would be cash. The partnership ca partnership's cash is increasing by $20,000. Um, cash is an asset. So in order to make an asset increase, remember we debit. So we are going to debit cash for that $20,000. Now, the reason why I'm not looking down at this agreed upon value paragraph is because that $20,000 isn't going to change. Cash is the value of cash. So that won't change. Now, the second thing that Olga contributes is accounts receivable. Um, now, these accounts receivable uh, are currently listed on her books for her prior business at $30,000. But if we look down at uh, this second paragraph here, we see that they have decided that $1,000 of that $30,000 are completely worthless. So the amount that Olga is actually contributing is $29,000 in accounts receivable. So the partnership's accounts receivable are increasing because they're receiving them. Accounts receivable is also an asset. So remember your debit and credit rules. In order to increase an asset, we must debit. So we will debit accounts receivable. And for that $29,000. Now, tied to these accounts receivable is also an allowance for doubtful accounts balance. So remember, this is the amount that the company believes is going to be uncollectible for the AR or the accounts receivable that was previously recorded. So if we take a look, we see that they have decided that $3,000 is a reasonable balance for allowance for doubtful accounts. So instead of using that $2,500, we are going to be using the $3,000 for the reasonable estimation. Now for allowance for doubtful accounts, remember this one is a little bit more complicated than some of the normal accounts. Since allowance for doubtful accounts represents the amounts that the company believes are going to be uncollectible as it relates to accounts receivable, this account offsets the accounts receivable balance. So an important rule about allowance for doubtful accounts to remember is that it is, uh, it's a contra asset account. <clears throat> now remember contra assets, uh, the way they increase and decrease, those signs will flip. So when normally we would debit an asset to make it go up, here we will be crediting this contra asset to make it go up. So allowance for doubtful accounts, that becomes a credit for this company. Remember, this is a contra asset, important rule to remember for those uh, allowance for doubtful accounts balances. All right, and that uh, clears up exactly what Olga has contributed to the business. So as you can see here, we currently do not balance. We have 49,000 in the debits and 3,000 in the credits. So we know that won't work. 
So let's go ahead. Uh, let's do our math. We had 49,000 in the debits. We have 3,000 already in the credits. So we're going to have to plug in a credit of $46,000. Now this plug, Keep in mind, this is Olga contributing to this new business. So remember, contributions are going to be recorded to the owner's capital account. So we are going to credit Olga's capital by that $46,000 that's missing. Now, when it comes to Jesus, we are going to be using the same kind of thought process here. Uh, we're going to take a look at what he contributed, but then we're going to be sure to check it with the agreed upon values that we uh, read about in that second paragraph. So Jesus contributes $2,000 cash. So cash is an asset. So we debit it to make it go up. That one's easy. Um, he also is contributing merchandise inventory. Now merchandise inventory, also an asset. Remember, future economic benefit, it's something we own, so we are going to be debiting that asset as well. Now up here, it says $7,000, but if we go down, we see that they agree that the merchandise inventory should be valued at 5,000, so we are going to ignore that 7,000 up top. Um, also, he is contributing equipment with an initial cost of $80,000 and accumulated depreciation of 50,000. If we look down in our second paragraph, though, they're telling us that the equipment's market value is 32,000. So here we have equipment with a book value, remember cost minus accumulated depreciation of about 30,000. But they're saying mm -mm, the book value, we don't really care about the book value, we care about the market value. So here's a very important rule about partnership formation. Um, since we're using those agreed upon values, we do not care about the equipment's old book value, which means we don't care about its old accumulated depreciation balance. What we care about is the new market value of this fixed asset. So we are actually going to be debiting the equipment for that $32,000 and we are leaving it alone at that. We are not even going to ac include accumulated depreciation in this entry. So when you're doing partnership formation entries, you should not include accumulated depreciation at all. So here, now that we have all of our debits, uh, we can go ahead and see how much we are going to have to plug into Jesus's capital account. So we have debits of 2,000, 5,000, and 32,000. So Jesus's capital will be credited for $39,000. And that's really all there is to partnership formation. Um, big things to remember is focus on those agreed upon values, pay attention to when they say that a portion of something is completely worthless, and remember to not include accumulated depreciation. Your focus is on that market value. All right. So until next time, happy studying.